I really wanted to take a good look at him and try to put out a, a documentary following, you know, what happened to him uh, over the next few years. And who would have thought that so much would happen? <laughs> but um, the result is uh, the film I Will Never Sorry. He's an incredibly charismatic personality. Um, he has a great sense of humor. He, you know, both talk, he, he speaks very boldly and talks a lot about current events and, and politics and um, history and, and a lot of universal values and, and issues. But um, at the same time, he can be very spontaneous and has a lot of energy and life. And um, it was kind of those qualities, maybe most of all, that made me feel like you know, there should be a movie. <laughs> there, there, there could be a 90-minute film about this, this man. I think the most um, dramatic uh, and intense Thing that happened during the course of this film was of course his detention uh, which I think for me even though at the time I was already in working on editing the film in New York and of course then we had to film more because there was these very important breaking events that were happening um, I think emotionally that was probably actually the strongest emotions of the whole the whole process um, our trips filming in Chengdu when he was going to police stations were also I think f for me in terms of you know, being in person filming him, those were probably the, the tensest moments. From his standpoint, from the you know daily interrogations that he faced during his 81-day detention, it wouldn't be so clear that he was being held for economic charges. The questions had much more to do with his activities online, his foreign connections, his uh, documentary films, his organization of, of people for different causes. I think. Um, for him, it was a little bit of a shock to hear, really? They said it's, a, it's about taxes because they weren't asking him about taxes for 81 days. According to Chinese state media, I was released on bail after confessing to tax evasion and because the he was a dissident Chinese, Ai Weiwei, 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 Ai
engage a domestic audience in conversations about art and politics and current events and just really again trying to draw people out to be in conversation and to use their voice and I think in the film um, part of why I wanted to show his biography and some of the earlier works and activities that he was involved in you really see that documenting and you know he took so many photographs over the last few decades he made underground books he curated underground shows all of this is trying to bring you know movements or the vanguard that's underground trying to bring people together and to have more conversation to publicize different people's works and ideas and I think when he started to use the internet that's why it excited him it was like giving him a much more potent kind of tool to to achieve things that he'd been working on and caring about already for for many years Freedom of expression kind of starts with your own individual courage and your willingness to to use your voice and that's the first step you know censorship often starts with self-censorship and I think to overcome that as a first step and you see through Weiwei and so many of the volunteers and colleagues and friends and peers and assistants that are with him you see that that is happening in in, in China today and I think that that should be an inspiration for people all over Aye.